We're in Okanagan country, Penticton, BC, in fact, for the first panel presented by Sportsnet of the new 23-24 season. Tony Barr here alongside Jack Michaels and Bob Stauffer and making her debut on the panel presented by Sportsnet, Paige Martin. Welcome, Paige. Jack, this year a little different for the Edmonton Oilers. What kind of sticks out when you look at the roster heading in to the rookie tournament beginning on Friday? Well, first of all, I'm a little surprised that it's Paige's debut. She's been all over I Oilers know. TV for a long time, so I, I find it hard to consider her a rookie, but uh, welcome, Paige. I, I think it's a different year. I, I think when Bob and I first came to this tournament in the fall of 2010, there was you know, anywhere between three and five players that had a legitimate shot of making the Oilers opening day roster. Oilers main camp opening day roster. This is the rookie camp, and it is a different composition of the roster. It, it's filled with a lot of training camp invites, meaning that the Oilers didn't necessarily draft the majority of these players. They've got eight picks here. Uh, their first rounder a couple of years ago, Xavier Borgo, is maybe the guy that theoretically could work his way into NHL games this season. And I'm just saying realistically, you never know. But it is a different roster than some of the quote-unquote star-studded first overall picks, slam dunk mortal locks to make the rosters when you look at Penticton a decade and a half ago. And that says a lot, Jack, about where this organization is right now because they're winning hockey games at the NHL and the Stanley Cup playoff level as well. Well, they're coming off a of summer, Tony, where they had three draft picks. Yeah. Now, that's a good sign. A lot of people are like, well, wait, you know, where are the young pros? Well, this is not where Edmonton's at right now. They're not looking to stockpile picks. They're looking to stockpile an NHL roster capable of competing for a Stanley Cup. A far cry from they, where they were back in the fall of 2010. Jack, first of all, I want to say thank you. I love being able to stand here in this beautiful scenery with all of you guys. You talk about how this has evolved. You've been here for nine seasons now coming back and what you guys have seen, the different prospects that have been here. Bob, in what ways have you seen it grow and evolve to essentially what brings us here this weekend? Yeah, I, Paige, I think just picking up kind of on what Jack alluded to, I mean, there have been years where the orders were the show here. You know, that's, that's the bottom line. You, you have the number one overall pick in 2010, Taylor Hall, and Jordan Everly was here that year. Magnus Piarvi was actually the best of the three of them. Yeah. He was in he that 10th overall. Yeah, and he was the 09 pick. And, and then in 2011, Nuge went number one and was pretty impactful. I remember in 2014, we came here in Leon. It was uh, Leon and Nikolai Ehlers were the two big stars of the tournament. Uh, and then in 2015, the Oilers had McDavid, Drysaddle, and Nurse. And we all knew as we watched that year that we were watching the future leadership core along with Ryan Nugent Hopkins of the Edmonton Oilers. So even last year, the Oilers had four number ones, Paige, that were here in this event, you know, in Holloway and Broberg. And I would argue that last year, Dylan Holloway, granted he was a couple years older, he dominated more in that tournament than anybody we had seen. And unfortunately, it didn't translate into an effective offensive season for him at the NHL level, but I wouldn't bet against him this year. The Oilers now are in a scenario where, look, they're going for it. They're going to be, uh, you know, draft capital is going to be in play even as the season goes on. It would not surprise me in the least that the number one pick in 2024 ends up traded as Oilers try to use another piece to go for the Stanley Cup. And as a result, secondary prospects become the focus for the organization. And I, I, I don't want to... It's not a way to denigrate anybody that's here. I'm just saying the Oilers have got a hit on a couple long-range guys. So I've got a couple guys. Everybody's going to be focused on Xavier Borgo. But for me, you know, Jaden Groob and Max Wanner, two big guys. Groob a six foot three right shot center, and Wanner a six foot three right shot defenseman. They're not going to be playing games for the Oilers this year, but. In two or three years from now, after some time in the American Hockey League, does their journey get them to the NHL? And that journey starts at this tournament. And, Bob, Water has been turning some heads since being drafted in the seventh round a couple of years ago. That's right? Yeah, well, I mean, if you can hit on a seventh-round pick or move a fifth-rounder like the Oilers did to go get group from the Rangers, I mean, you got to if you just have one of those guys pan out. And the other thing is, from an organizational perspective, Edmonton's got a lot of left-shot centers, and they've got some pretty good core left-shot defensemen. Where they need the help is at right shot center and right D, and that's why I'm targeting those two players. All right, well, the Oilers rookies take on the Jets rookies beginning on Friday in what should be a heck of a weekend here in Penticton.